Okay, what's up? So in this video, I am going to share with you some things that I'm learning. Uh, and it has to do with research uh, and marketing or in actually, to be honest, in anything in life, uh, you have to do a lot of research, proper research in marketing. If it's your demographic or your product or even uh, your competition, there's research that needs to take place so that you can gather information and make a more informed decision on your approach. Uh, so today I'm going to share with you five distinctive uh, differences between um, an effective scientific approach in research versus an effective common sense approach in research. And both are two polar opposites. However, uh, I submit that a healthy balance between the two is the proper approach. But I'm going to be sharing with you five differences between the two. Okay, difference number one is theoretical structures and concepts. Science systematically creates theories and concepts and then submits them through repeated tests. Whereas common sense, uh, rarely, they'll take uh, theories and concepts and they rarely put them through the gauntlet of systematic tests because they apply the theories and concepts loosely. And those two are big difference big differences. Now, the key here is uh, systematically testing. Science will take these concepts and then they'll test and try, test and try, rinse and repeat. Whereas common sense, it's based on the subjective uh, preference of whoever's going through the observation, right? Uh, so let's say me, I think about a product that makes sense to me, that feels good to me, that I think uh, the majority of the public and my target demographic wants. Now that's just me based on my preference and subjective uh, opinion. Because it makes sense to me, I'm thinking if I put it out, it's going to work. However, what science tells me is that, okay, this makes sense to me. Let me test it. Uh, remit of I will make you rich or something like that. It's a, <laughs> one of Tim Ferriss's boys. Um, but Ramit, is a, he's a genius in the, the area of finance. Now, one of his ways that one of his teachings is to test, right? You have an idea and then you test it and then you take the information, uh, you review it, reflect on it, and then move forward, right? Oftentimes, a lot of us uh, entrepreneurs, we get excited and then we put it out. So... Um, having a balance between this is what I think common sense in what I see and observe I'll put it to the test and then I'll reflect on it and then rinse repeat so that's my um, encouragement to you for this first uh, distinctive between science and common sense feel it apply it loosely the theories and concepts emotionally connect and then test it put it through the gauntlet of systematic testing to see if it works Cool. Okay, distinction number two between science and common sense is the theory development and testing principle. Um, in science, uh, like I mentioned earlier, there's theories, concepts, there's structures, and then we put them to, uh, through the test. Now, in this second distinction, uh, we're answering the question of why did we come up with these theories, these structures, right, these concepts? So we're asking the behind-the-scenes questions of why, and then even that why question gets tested and gets analyzed, but gets analyzed based on the original premise. Uh, now, on the common sense side, asking or answering the question of why doesn't even come into play. Why? Because it makes sense to me. Right. That's the common sense answer to a question of why did you think that? Why do you think your intern program will work for my company? Common sense. It makes sense to me. So big difference, big difference. One, you go through the, the, the testing and the, um, the, the probing of the why question and then you test it. Right. And then the other side is there is no answer. You know, it's just because uh, and that just because is a little too loose for some people and for some people it works uh, I submit that you can find um, a median in between you feel the conviction of the it just makes sense that hunch right that prompting that inner prompting and then you take that and then you explore openly why this 
gives you peace, why that makes just makes sense to you. Explore why you have that peace, and then you test that by asking questions, getting some research, some, some information, and then you move forward from there. I don't think it's a important, you know, it's a wise thing to just stay on polar opposites and do this side or do th that side, um, but definitely stay within the, the median and find out why and then move forward. So that's distinction number two. The third distinction between uh, science and common sense is the element of control. In science, we have a control, something um, we have different options that we can place and we have control over to say, okay, these are the variables. I'm going to eliminate three and then I'm going to test one. I'm going to remove one and I'm going to push up two and then eliminate the others. So the element of control is very, very vital. A uh, big difference. In science, we're looking for that one result and we're testing four, right? And we have control over these. In common sense, it's not about that one variable that creates the result. In common sense, oftentimes it's multiple results, multiple variables that contribute to the one result. In addition to that one particular uh, variable that we're studying. So let's say the intern program, right? I have an intern program that will work for your company. The reason why is because I know. And I'm talking more in terms of the common sense perspective. The reason why it's going to work is because I know I feel it and I see your need and I can supply that need. However, there's multiple things involved, multiple variables involved that make me think that it'll work. In order for me to know that it'll work for sure, I need to know which one of these variables actually do work because not all of them will. On the common sense side, it says that all of these in its totality is the reason why it'll work and is the reason why uh, it'll be successful uh, to you. On the scientific standpoint, all of these reasons are my proposed observations of why I think it'll work, and one of them will definitely work after I test each of them. So the concept of control is another big distinction. It's either you have control or you don't. It's either you have that one single variable after studying them, or we have multi multiple variables that make it make sense. The fourth distinction between science and common sense is called the relationship among phenomena. Oftentimes, scientists and the layperson, right, the science and the common sense person, will always consider relationships, whether it's a deep connected relationship or just an interrelationship between objects based on observation. Uh, this is less polar, less opposite, um, and it sits more in between because relationship can mean various things. Um, the relationship can be between what you're looking at or it can be how I'm relating as a scientist to the information because I, I might be asking, I wonder what behavior is going to change. I wonder if X uh, approach will work to Z. So um, this is less systematic, right, and more connection type more I am related to this and again like I said the relationship can be uh, you know determined in various ways so it's it's not as it's an easier place for me to start in the middle right when I'm encouraging you as a marketer or as an educator um, on how to properly assess conduct research on whatever you're trying to do I would definitely start here because there's not necessarily that polar difference but it's right in between to say, I do have a relationship either with the product or with the demographic because I'm thinking about it, simply thinking about it. So relationship among phenomena. And the last distinction is called explanations of phenomena. Now, when we consider explanations, uh, you definitely have to, on a scientific standpoint, think about these three questions. What is observable, right? What is also logical? And then the last question is, what is empirically tested? What can be empirically tested? Uh, these are very experiential in nature, very systematic, uh, scientific in nature. Um, when you consider the common sense side, you're asking one big question, which engulfs 
the metaphysical side, the higher philosophical, fluffy type of information. A uh, big difference. One is extremely empirical, experienced based, and then one is very lofty, very philosophically, um, you know, based. That all that head knowledge. The difference is clear. I'm submitting to you that you can mend the two, create that fine line, and use both. I would personally start from the philosophical side to explore the me, right? The Simon Sinek uh, approach, the why first. And then from there, I would take whatever I have inside and create a task list, a checklist, right? A list of questions that I can use to empirically verify and prove um, what I'm thinking. And if it doesn't work, if, it, if I, I'm not able to prove it and then I choose other variables, and I might even change my original observation. I might even change my original premise. Um, so all of this is uh, theoretically based in the scientific method. Um, what does this relate to? How does this relate to a marketer or an educator? For the marketer, uh, you would definitely start. So in layman's terms, you start with your heart, right? With that hunch. And then you think about it. You pray about it. You meditate about it, right? And then you create actionable items that you can verify to test. You're not going to put it out to the market yet as an official product, but you're going to test, gain some information. So that's Ramit, uh, his approach. And then you reflect on it, find out what works, and then you take the highest percentage of the variables, right, for that one result, put it out there, and then you see what happens. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, tweak it, move forward. Okay, hope. That was okay, some good knowledge for you, and I appreciate you taking some time to uh, listen, but I think I, I really mostly appreciate the opportunity for me just to share, because as I'm sharing, I'm learning this stuff as well. So God bless you. Peace out.